When it comes to gaming, there's one company that evoked more nostalgia than any other. That, of course, is Nintendo. It continues to publish and develop some of the most popular video game franchises in the world and competes among the big three to this day. We've already covered PlayStation and Xbox, so it's only fair that we now pay the lovable grandfather of video games a visit. This is the evolution of Nintendo home consoles. Nintendo's origins can be traced all the way back to 1889 when it was founded by Hiroshi Yamauchi as Yamauchi Nintendo. Mr. Yamauchi started off by producing handmade Hanafuda, which is a type of Japanese playing cards. In 1959, Nintendo, which changed its name to Nintendo Playing Card, entered into an agreement with Walt Disney to use the Disney characters on their cards. A few years later, the company's name was shortened to just Nintendo, with nobody being 100% sure what the word Nintendo actually means, though it's thought to loosely translate as leave luck to heaven. Over the following years, playing cards became less popular among Japanese households, and in 1964, the value of the company's stock began to plummet from 900 to just 60 yen. Nintendo was in heavy debt, and Yamauchi was desperate to find the next big thing. So they decided to invest in new ventures, like packages of instant rice, a taxi service, and the not-so-very family-friendly love hotels. Eventually, Nintendo decided to venture into the weapons business, uh, I mean the toy market, and released Japan's first electronic toy in 1970, the Nintendo Beam Gun. This would become an ancestor to the NES Zapper that was later used in video games such as Duck Hunt. In 1972, an American company named Magnavox created the first commercial home video game console, the Magnavox Odyssey. Nintendo developed and produced a light gun accessory for the console. Two years later, Nintendo also secured the rights to distribute the Magnavox Odyssey in Japan. Having witnessed firsthand how popular video games were, Nintendo began to work on building its own consoles. Nintendo's first official console was a joint effort with partner Mitsubishi. Released in 1977, it was given the unimaginative title of Color TV Game 6, with the number 6 denoting how many games could be played on it. Soon after, they also released the Color TV Game 15, at the same time, they were also working on developing games for arcades, many of which would later be ported to consoles, including Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers. In 1985, Nintendo really started to stand out from the crowd as they released the much-loved Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. It was Nintendo's first home video game console released outside of Japan. A different-looking version had already been released within Japan in 1983, known as the Family Computer or Famicom. And while some of the games and art styles varied, the consoles were essentially the same in terms of performance. To say the NES was significant is an understatement. It helped to revive the video game industry after the crash in 1983, going on to sell 62 million units worldwide and set the record for the longest surviving video game system in history. It stayed on the American market until 1995, and in Japan, it wasn't discontinued until 2003. Many of Nintendo's most successful game franchises were born on the NES, like Final Fantasy, Castlevania, Metroid, and The Legend of Zelda. Duck Hunt was also very popular, but the most sold game for the NES with over 40 million copies sold was, of course, Super Mario Brothers. The NES was praised for its simple yet at the time innovative controller. Joysticks were the common method of control before Nintendo designed and patented their D-pad. Even though the trend has now reversed, the joysticks often being preferred, D-pads were much better for playing 2D games like Donkey Kong. Fun fact, Donkey Kong was the first game that involved jumping and is therefore considered to be the first true platformer. 
The much-anticipated successor to the NES was the SNES, released in 1991 in the United States with the new S standing for Super. Hence the Famicom, released one year earlier in Japan, also became the Super Famicom. The SNES was a 16-bit console that saw a significant increase in processing power, audio, and more advanced cartridges. At the time, Nintendo and Sega were going head-to-head -head in what is referred to as the Bit Wars, with advertising campaigns taking jabs at each other and both claiming to have the superior console. What Nintendo? Eventually, Nintendo got the upper hand and ended up outselling its closest rival, with 49 million units sold compared to Sega Genesis's sales of 35 million. The third best-selling console at the time was the TurboGrafx-16, which lagged far behind with sales of 10 million units. Games that appeared on the SNES included the first Mario Kart game, as well as sequels to popular franchises such as Final Fantasy VI, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Donkey Kong Country, and The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. The SNES controller got a makeover too, with rounded edges replacing the former rectangular design and additional buttons being added to both the front and shoulders of the gamepad. Nintendo began to face tougher opposition when they released their next generation of console, the Nintendo 64, in 1996. After all, they now had to compete with the very successful PlayStation, which had already been out for two years at that point. Despite quadrupling their bits to 64 and outselling the Sega Saturn with sales figures of 33 million to just 9 million, the cartridge-based N64 was no match for the CD-based PlayStation, which took over the crown as market leader and sold more than double the amount of the other two combined. In a trend that still holds true for many today, Nintendo came to be recognized as a source of fun and entertainment for families rather than a serious gaming console for individuals. Nintendo's games tended to have much more cartoon-like graphics and fantasy-based characters compared to the added realism brought by other machines. Having said that, the N64 did take major steps forward in terms of modern 3D graphics and featured iconic titles that are still enjoyed today. It had a fantastic library of adventure and party games like Super Mario 64, Super Smash Bros., Pokemon Stadium, Donkey Kong 64, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, and GoldenEye 007. The N64 controller was a controversial change, featuring a three-pronged design with a central joystick, D-pad, face and shoulder buttons, plus a trigger button at the back. Fun fact, the epic multiplayer mode for GoldenEye was a last-minute addition. Developer Steve Ellis had access to the code written for a single-player game and decided to turn GoldenEye into a multiplayer game within a month, so thanks, Steve. If the Nintendo 64 was up against it, then the Nintendo GameCube was even more so. Released in 2001, it was up against the PlayStation 2 and Microsoft's new system, the Xbox. The GameCube looked much more kid-friendly and like a toy in comparison to its rivals. Despite its name, it wasn't even a cube. It measured 5.9 by 6.3 by 4.3 inches. Nintendo managed to sell 22 million GameCubes. Instead of using cartridges, the system switched to using mini-discs and did not use CDs or DVDs like its competitors. Whereas DVDs could store up to 8.5 gigabytes of data, the GameCube discs could only store 1.5 gigabytes. This meant that some cross-platform content had to be compressed or features removed from games entirely. Another major drawback was the lack of online gameplay. Reportedly, the GameCube only had eight games with internet or local area network support. The console didn't feature an internal hard drive either and relied on the use of memory cards. Games which players were able to enjoy on GameCube included Super Smash Bros. Melee, The 
Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Mario Kart Double Dash. Super Mario Sunshine. Metroid Prime. Animal Crossing. And Luigi's Mansion. Nintendo got rid of the three-pronged controller design and instead opted for a more traditional two-pronged version. In 2002, Nintendo made a wireless controller, called the Wavebird Wireless Controller, even before Xbox and PlayStation managed to do so. Nintendo drastically changed its game plan when it released the Wii console in 2006. Its functionality centered around the use of motion controls. The technology was innovative and unique at the time. The Wii is pronounced as Wii, which emphasized the console is for everyone. This meant the target audience was much broader than its rivals. A staggering 102 million Wii consoles were sold, beating both the PS3 and Xbox 360, which sold 87 and 86 million units respectively. Its specifications in terms of its processor memory and graphics, which wasn't even HD, were far less impressive than the competition, but those things were never intended to be the main selling point. Nintendo had reverted to selling fun. Memorable games from the Wii lineup are Wii Sports, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Mario Kart Wii, Super Mario Galaxy, and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. The Wii Remote is the primary controller for the Wii. It uses Bluetooth and features a D-pad, buttons, and an internal speaker. The Nunchuck is an additional controller that can be connected to the Wii Remote and has an analog stick and two trigger buttons. Additional accessories for the console were also popular, like the Wii Balance Board. This board was designed for use with exercise and sports games, like Wii Fit. The Wii Balance Board sold 42 million units alone. Fun fact, the board achieved a Guinness World Record for the best-selling waiting device. The Wii U was released in 2012 and was Nintendo's biggest flop. The Wii U is an example of very, very bad marketing. People were confused about whether it was a new console or just an accessory for the Wii, and it's easy to understand why if you look at the trailer of the Wii U. They literally named it the New Controller. The Wii U wasn't the greatest name either, since it just sounds like a Wii accessory. This could have been avoided easily if they chose to name it the Wii 2. Oh, and the and ads were pretty bad too. Hi, buddy, popcorn, that's a deal. Up against the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, of which 110 million and an estimated 50 million were sold respectively, the Wii U only sold 13 million units. It was a huge disappointment after the grand success of the Wii. The Wii U was the first Nintendo console to support HD graphics, and those who did buy it were able to play Mario Kart 8, Super Mario 3D World, Splatoon, Super Mario Maker, and new Super Mario Brothers for you. The Wii U gamepad is the console's primary controller and has a built-in touchscreen, which can be used without a television or as a companion to games being played on the television. The concept of having a hybrid console of both a standard and handheld console was there, but there was a lot of work ahead to make it more appealing. After the Wii U, Nintendo went back to the drawing board and refined their hybrid concept until they released the Nintendo Switch in 2017. It features two Joy-Con controllers that can be attached to the 6.2-inch touchscreen display to play it in hybrid mode. It has a battery life of around three hours of uninterrupted play on a full charge. The Switch has many amazing popular titles like Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Platoon 2,
Super Mario Odyssey. My personal favorite, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. To date, the Nintendo Switch has performed far better than its predecessor in terms of sales figures, selling more than 61 million units. It is impressive to see how far Nintendo has come with their home consoles. It's also worth mentioning that Nintendo has released a number of iconic handheld consoles throughout its history too. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.